Greetings, friends. It is Sunday, December the 27th, the third day of Christmas, which is three French hens for those of you who count the days of Christmas that way. <clears throat> for us at North Congregational Church, it is the third of 12 days of celebration of the holiday of Christmas. And this Sunday between Christmas and New Year's is always a time when we feature Christmas carol singing, lots of music, and just generally remember and recollect and celebrate how wonderful the birth of Christ is for all people, what good news it is for all the world. And that is what we will be doing today with a rerun of the children's pageant, with a collection of Christmas carols with words to sing along, some great music from the organ, an anthem from our choir, and a short message to remind us what we're all about. So we will begin this time together by worshiping God, calling upon God to be in this place, to be with us wherever we are and at all times. And I invite you to join together in singing the carol, What Child Is This? And the words will be up for that carol as well. One of the high points of the Christmas season was the recording of the children's Christmas pageant. Ordinarily, it is a live presentation, but since we were not live in the sanctuary, our children came on December the 12th and recorded it in the pouring rain. So you will hear the pitter-patter of raindrops as we watch again the children's Christmas pageant. Thank you. 
This was, the, this was the first enrollment when Quirinius was governor of Syria, and all went to be enrolled, each to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee, from Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be enrolled with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to be delivered, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling cloths, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the end. In that region, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch of their flock by night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. They were filled with fear. The angel said to them, Be not afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of a great joy, which will come to all the people. For to you is born this day, in the city of David, a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find the babe wrapped, wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in the manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among the people with whom he is pleased. In the book of Matthew we read, now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men came from the east, came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all of Jerusalem with him, and assembling all the chief priests and scribes of the people. He inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They told them, in Bethlehem of Judea, so it is written by the prophet, and lo, the star which they have seen in the east went before them till it came to rest over the place where the child was. When the wise men saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And going into the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother. And they fell down and worshipped him. Then, Opening the treasures, they offered him gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And all this came to pass that the prophecy of Isaiah might be fulfilled. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace, there will be no end upon the throne of David and over his kingdom, to establish it and uphold it, with justice and with righteousness, from this time forth and forevermore. Amen.
thank you to everyone who helped to make this Christmas pageant possible. It was certainly a 2020 kind of thing with everyone in masks, but I also know that part of it was that the children were so excited and eager to come to church, not even to go into the church, but just to be on the porch, to be taking part in these things together. And it was a thrill to see them so engaged as they prepared this. Thank you to the many people whose hard work made this possible. And they are listed in our, on our uh, North Church planner as many of our church members receive. Now, let us pray. <clears throat> oh, gracious God, when we think about your coming, when we think about what was brought into the earth with the birth of Jesus, we want to be able to say, yes, let this happen just like Mary did. Oh God, open our hearts and minds to the ways that you speak to us, to the opportunities that we have to go along with your plan for this earth, to the opportunities that we have to proclaim the good news and to be the good news. Lift us up when we struggle with this and remind us again that we are followers of the one born in Bethlehem, Jesus, and that we can do the things that he commanded us to do, including praying the way that he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our worship continues with a anthem, an anthem from our North Church Virtual Choir, a combined choir put together by each of our various choir members who recorded themselves and then were mixed into one performance. And we are so excited and happy once again to hear them singing the Christmas hymn. While by my sheep I watched at night, glad tidings brought an angel bright. How great my joy, great my joy, 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 joy. Praise me the Lord in heaven on high. Praise me the Lord in heaven on high. There shall be born, so he did say. In Bethlehem, a child today, how great my joy, great my joy, 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 praise me the Lord in heaven on high, praise me the Lord in heaven on high. There shall he lie in manger me, who shall redeem the world from sin, how great my joy, great my joy, 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 praise me the Lord in heaven on high, praise me the Lord in heaven on high. Lord, ever more to me be nigh, then shall my heart be filled with joy, how great my joy, great my joy. Joy, 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 praise me the Lord in heaven on high, praise me the Lord in heaven on high. Today's scripture reading is from the book of Luke, chapter 1, verses 26 to 38. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. 
and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. May God add his blessing to the reading of his word. Besides Jesus, I think that probably Mary is the most beloved and honestly the most pivotal character in this whole birth narrative. You remember that this is a whole long story about Jesus that's going to begin here with his incarn with the incarnation of God with his birth and is going to end at the empty tomb. In between, there are so many other things. There are so many stories. There are so many people whom God encounters. But there's only one who just simply said, let it be, here I am, and that is Mary. And so I wanted to sort of circle back to the story of the Annunciation and think again for a few minutes about what it is that Mary did and what it is that we can do when we are confronted with extraordinary news from God about God's purposes for us. I would like to think that I, like my namesake Mary, would say, oh yes, God, I'll be happy to do that. But I'm pretty sure, actually, I'd probably say what I say most of the time. Um, okay, I think so. Let me check my calendar. Let me just see if this is going to fit in. Let me see if I can make this work. I promise you I will do everything I can. That is not good enough for God. Mary didn't say that. That is not what God wants to hear. And that is not how I or anyone else needs to respond to God. Even though I think that that would be anybody's default. Mary's willingness is what she brings to this. Her openness to what God is doing. We are more like the people in all the rest of the story. The people who have waited so long for God to speak that sometimes we forget. God is speaking all the time. Mary's willingness and openness, I believe, came because she had not lost the hope that God would act. She had not lost the hope in her heart that God would speak to her times, and she had not lost the true hope that she could do something for the sake of God's work in the world. As it happened, all of those hopes were answered by God when the angel came to her and made this announcement. She did have some questions, but they were mostly, how is this going to happen? There was never a question of her unwillingness. She didn't hear the plan that God was going to make her pregnant and say, okay, wait, wait a minute. I have to weigh the pros and the cons. For us, it's a little more complicated. We don't get an angel coming to us as Gabriel did to Mary, and we don't have angel choruses in the sky as the shepherds saw. We don't have the star blazing forth with a big arrow effectively saying to the Magi, come this way. We have to look carefully. We have to listen. We have to be ready for the ways that God will speak in our world. Maybe it's an opportunity that tugs at your heart, something that you don't even understand why you don't want to say no to it. Sometimes it's a moment when your heart is wrung as it can be when we see lines of people waiting for food, lines of people expressing their fear as they wait for COVID tests, as we see the plight of people who are facing eviction. When we feel those things, and we feel them on a visceral level, on a level that is not even in our thinking mind, we can be pretty sure that God is speaking to us. Sometimes our eagerness is just like those children who when they were told that after months and months and months away they were going to church said, oh boy, oh that's wonderful, we'll go to church. They did that pageant without even a rehearsal. They were given their parts, they were given some instructions, and they dove in and did it. Yes, they were fidgety. Yes, the camera angles were 
difficult. Yes, there was kind of a stop action motion, but God was at work and they knew that they were part of God's work. And so I'm saying to myself as I look at this and I'm saying to you, we need to really keep ourselves ready. Jesus kept saying to his followers, keep your wake, keep your eyes open, keep your ears perked up because God, the kingdom of God will be apparent for those who have eyes to see and ears to hear it. And so as we go forth from Advent now into Christmas season and then forward into Epiphany when we begin to look at the ways that people respond to God's calling, let us have eyes to see and ears to hear. Let us be ready with the hope, the hope that will not disappoint us, that God can use us just as we are. Let us be ready to say like Mary, here am I. I'm grateful for the contributions of Pat Butler, of Nancy Scott, of the children, of so many people and the North Church Virtual Choir. We will hear them in just a few moments giving our final, our benediction, our choral benediction. And then we will hear Pat playing uh, Carol of the Bells and also What Child Is This with Lule Thy Child, both of them beautiful pieces of music. And then we will be back for a final closing word. And so now, let us hear the North Church Virtual Choir singing the choral benediction. May the
Thank you everybody for joining us in this time of worship and musical celebration of the birth of Christ. I hope that you will come back and watch us again. We are on every Sunday at 10.30 a.m. on Facebook Live. We also appear on our northcongregationalchurch.org website and on our YouTube channel, North, Con North Church Communications. All three of those places are places you can find our times of worship, as well as Wednesdays at 3 o'clock, our Wednesday inspirations. I hope that you will go forth from this time inspired once again with renewed courage, renewed hope, and able to say to God when God calls, here am I, let it be with me according to your word. May God bless you and be with you till we meet again.